Thank you, Representative. Uh, I'd like to recognize the gentle lady from the state of Alabama, Ms. Sewell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To be clear, none of us want waste, fraud, and abuse in any government program. We all were sent here to be good stewards of taxpayers' money. I also want to just say that the facts are that we dealt with a once-in-a-generation pandemic and that there were lots of Americans, vulnerable Americans, who were left more vulnerable because of this pandemic. In my state of Alabama alone, 532,000 Alabamians were spared from economic disaster because of the work done by this committee and the House of Representatives in the early months of COVID-19. The American Rescue Plan provided many states, unemployment offices, the necessary resources to ensure that funds got out the door in a timely fashion to those facing the most dire economic and health scenarios imaginable at no fault of their own. I will never forget the sight, the sight of family after family lining up in cars to local charities and to churches and to pantries to have food loaded into their cars. And do you know why I will never forget it? Because I was bagging and loading lots of those groceries each and every time I was at home. These people were people who two weeks ago, earlier than when, this, the, when the pandemic started, had jobs and no fear of losing the roof over their heads. And then all of a sudden, they had friends and neighbors turning to them, offering them existence to just get by. I didn't want my families to just get by. I wanted them to get back on their feet. The actions taken by the Ways and Means Committee in a matter of weeks ensured that millions of my constituents not only got by, but were able to pay their mortgage, make their mortgage payments, as well as to fill their kitchen cabinets. While facing a crisis like this, none of us have experienced. We do know that fraud did occur. But as all of you have said over the course of the last few hours, this was not something that was just sprung upon us. As you said, Mr. Mr. Dewar, uh, as Comptroller, you understand that we, um, that the states were not prepared. You said that. And I can tell you from firsthand experience to the state that I represent, Alabama was not prepared. But because we gave them resources in the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan, they got prepared. And as they got prepared, it took time. They were, uh, you know, learning how to ride the bicycle as the bicycle was going down the road. And there were problems with it. But I also know that, Mr. Chairman, it's not fair to talk about the system without actually having on this panel workers who worked in these state agencies to be able to talk in earnest about what went on in those state agencies. I also know that we did give money. We gave money uh, back when this pandemic first got started and the Trump administration did not put together um, an anti-fraud program that would help prevent this. Now, I know that fraud will happen in any program, but I guess my question to you is, what can we do to make sure that states are more prepared and actually assist in finding those fraudsters that are out there? Um, I know that so many of the folks uh, that work in these, uh, uh, these uh, Department of Labor's and the states are good, earnest people who are trying to do their job. They just need more resources, more people uh, in, in order to do that and better systems. So what can we do um, as a pro prophylactic measure to really help address the lack of preparedness in state agencies? Um, the first thing I'd suggest is uh, I mentioned earlier the Fraud Reduction and Data Analytics Act that Congress passed in 2016. That only applies to federal agencies. It doesn't apply to the state agencies. So I think if you would apply it to the state agencies and encourage and incentivize them to implement a comprehensive anti-fraud strategy on a continual basis, which would be effective throughout the whole period of time, that would be the number one thing. The number two thing is if in future emergencies, uh, there are measures, if they have that in place, there should be not as much of a need or a need at all for Congress to allow self-certifications. That, I think, helped uh, tie the hands of the states a bit because they weren't allowed to ask for documentation and support. So those two things would allow them to be prepared, manage the normal program much better,
and be prepared for emergencies? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that we really should have had state administrators uh, on this panel as well as workers who worked in this area, that that would have given us a more broader view about what we can all do to help uh, prevent fraud in the future. Thank you, and I yield back. 